Hey guys, welcome back to week 11 of the Automotive Weekly Waveforms. In the last two weeks, we've covered ignition stuff. We covered ignition primary, uh, voltage and current. We covered ignition secondary. And both of those we use kind of on the distributor-based systems. Now, because it's more common, and we're gonna see it a lot more often, I'm gonna cover coil on plug systems, especially these systems that have the smart coil. If we have a vehicle with just a regular two wire coil, then we can you know, treat that really similar to the primary voltage on a distributor system. But with the smart coils, we have to do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna break down the circuitry of each one of these systems. Um, and there's a couple variations, very small variations in the smart coil design. Um, but let's go ahead and cover the traditional ignition system before we go into the smart coil system. So let's cover the traditional dumb coil to begin with, where the transistor is built in to the ECM. Now this could be a regular distributor based system, or it could be a vehicle with coil on plug like the Ford modular engines, a lot of the Chrysler products that still have a two wire coil on top of the spark plug. We have our battery over here, full battery voltage. Now there's normally a fuse and a relay you know, that supplies this power, um, but it's gonna supply our primary side, which is the larger winding here. And then it's gonna go over here to the ECM, to a transistor, um, and then get turned to ground. Now the ECM processor or the logic board is going to control this transistor, which is then going to control the current flow through our ignition coil. So as that power starts going through that coil, it builds up a magnetic field inside that coil. When the computer shuts off that transistor and current stops flowing, that magnetic field collapses and it makes a big inductive kick in the voltage. So here on the primary ignition waveform, we can see that we have battery voltage here. It goes to ground when that transistor gets turned on and it releases it. It kicks way up, sometimes up to 400 volts or even higher on some vehicles, drops back down. We have our flame front or our spark line here um, or burn time, many different terms for this. Um, but there is a spark going across the spark plug during this period. Once that spark is extinguished, we have some oscillations and we go back down to battery voltage. Now, when that magnetic field collapses and we get that inductive kick, it jumps a lot more on the secondary side. So we could see upwards of 40,000 volts on the secondary side. Now we normally don't see that if everything's functioning properly because that spark's gonna go through the spark plug, through the plug wire, um, whatever it may be, however the system's laid out, and then into the spark plug, and it doesn't take 40,000 volts. But if we unhook that wire, we might see 30 or 40,000 kV on our scope. Uh, but the waveform looks very similar to what we had on the primary side. We're sitting here, now we, this isn't a measurable battery voltage because we're looking at it thousands of volts now, so it's hard to measure this. It drops down, we have some oscillations, and it slowly starts building up or tapering up a little bit here as that magnetic field grows. It gets released, that magnetic field collapses and jumps way up. That's our, our big spark here. That was the energy it takes to get that spark going through the spark plug. Once that happens, now we are sparking across the spark plug here. Once that spark is ex extinguished, we have some oscillations and it starts over again. Now, the problem with a smart coil or a coil that has the transistor built in, we cannot look at the primary side. So we cannot get this waveform over here. And the reason why is we move the transistor from over here to over here. So the only thing we're gonna see is this logic level signal. So this is going to be a basic reference of a smart coil system. We have battery voltage going into the coil. Now, all of this stuff here, I should have put a box around that. All of that stuff is going to be built into that ignition coil. Most of it's in the top of that coil. We have our primary coil, our secondary coil, and we have the transistor. And then we have an extra wire that goes to ground. So we have a power, we have a ground. Now, I think there might be one or two models out there that actually ground through the mounting bolt of the coil, but I don't remember, so don't quote me on that. Then we have our third wire, which is a logic level command for the transistor, but it's just a low current wire going to the ECM. Now, some of these is gonna be a zero to 12 volt signal. Some vehicles are only gonna use zero to five volts on the, the trigger or the logic level. And then some vehicles, we are going to see a pulse that jumps up to fire the coil. And 
depends on the transistor or the electronics inside that coil on what we're going to see. But the rest of the co coil operation is the same. This primary signal here is happening inside of the coil and we can't, cannot measure that. So on these vehicles, the only thing we can measure is this secondary. We can measure our amperage over here, which I didn't draw the waveform, and we can measure our trigger. Now the trigger doesn't hold a lot of information on most vehicles, um, but it does give you that sync signal to know when that coil is supposed to be charging up. And then depending on the coil design internal, the transistor setup, um, the electronics there, we could be sitting high on our, on our signal wire here and it may pulse it to ground in order to activate that transistor. Just depends on what style transistor, what, st what style electronics are inside of that ignition coil. So we are gonna jump onto my 2007 Toyota Highlander Hybrid, and we are going to measure some of this stuff. Now, there's a couple ways that we can look at the secondary signal. One is with a coil unplug paddle probe. This one is one that came with my U-scope. I also have the older PicoScope coil unplug wand. Um, I've been having a little bit of issues with this one, and I don't know if it's my cord or this, or just me, maybe I'm getting bad signals, um, but I get a little bit better signal out of this wand from AES Wave that came with my U-scope. So we're gonna use that instead. And then there's some vehicles that you just cannot get a good signal with a COP wand. And on those vehicles, it's best just to remove the coil. We're gonna hook in a HT lead or a high tension lead. It's basically a spark plug wire between that ignition coil and the spark plug. And then we can hook a regular generic secondary, uh, secondary ignition pickup onto that plug wire and get a lot better signal. So my Toyota Highlander is a hybrid and it's hard to keep it running even with the heater on full blast. Um, it still shuts off at times. So if you're working on a hybrid, especially a Toyota hybrid, um, I have a video on this particular vehicle on how to put it into maintenance mode where it'll actually leave the engine running. So if you're troubleshooting something, you can go into that mode, the engine won't shut off on you. So that's what I'm going to do to keep it running and we'll look at some waveforms. So the waveform that we're gonna look at first is the amperage waveform. Now I have this tied in at a fuse underneath the dash. Now this amperage waveform covers the injectors and the ignition coils. So we can see the smaller pulses here are the injectors. They're normally around 12 ohms of resistance, so around one amp. And then our larger peaks, I don't know what the secondary resistance of this is, we can't test it because it's a smart coil. Um, but these coils are pulling a lot more. They're actually pulling around 11 amps. And they're all fairly even. If I drop a cursor down, we can see that you know, one of them is a little bit high, higher than the other ones, um, but it may or may not be an issue. But just looking at the current here, we cannot identify which cylinder is which. If we activate the channel that has our coil on plug one, then we can then identify which channel is which. So yet this yellow trace, actually I'm gonna shrink down our amperage waveform here, give us a little more real estate on the screen. This yellow trace is our coil on plug one. Now I'm just gonna set this on top of one of the ignition coils. So we can see that I get a pattern right here. And actually, am I tied onto this one? No, I'm not tied onto that one. Um, but I do have a trigger on one of the other channels. So we can see a waveform right there. Let me zoom into this a little bit. Now we can see a waveform, but it's not that clear. We don't have the ability of really measuring what our KV is. I mean, we could say that that could be, you know, 1.32 KV. That's not enough KV to jump a spark plug gap inside the cylinder. So I highly doubt that that is the case. Uh, we are just picking up a weak signal on this coil. Now, as I move the coil unplug probe around this coil to different spots, we can see that the amplitude of this waveform changes slightly. Now, some vehicles, like I had a Acura 3.2 TL in here the other day, I could not get a signal at all off that ignition coil. The signal was so small um, that it was pretty much unusable because the coils had a lot of shielding built into them to prevent that signal from radiating out and affecting other circuits on the vehicle. So I'm gonna leave that one on there and then I'm gonna turn on channel C, which is that uh, spark plug wire going between the ignition coil and the spark plug. Now, even that one's jumping around a little bit, but it's a lot cleaner signal. So let me turn off our coil unplug wand. 
Now here, where our signal is still bouncing around a little bit, I have a hard time getting clean imagery from coil on plug vehicles. Um, they tend to bounce around a lot and it's a little harder to analyze that waveform. And I don't know if that's due just to the internal circuitry of the coil, um, if it just operates a little bit different from a traditional you know, distributor-based coil or what the, what the deal is. But, you know, not every cycle of the engine are we gonna have something that we can rely on the measurements. So even here, we're still only showing, you know, 1.5 kV um, for our spark line, but then our peak is up above, I think, what our measurable allowance is here. Um, so we're, we're pegged out above 10 kV when that coil discharges into the spark plug. And then on this one, maybe I have some extra resistance in this spark plug wire I'm using. Um, and that's why our KV on the firing line is so high and then it slowly tapers off. But sometimes you have to use a spark plug wire in there to get a waveform. That's the only way that you can get a usable waveform. But if we look at the burn line, you know, sometimes we still can get usable information here. You know, if we had a lean condition, which I'd have to go in there and try to snap the throttle, which it has a very, very slow throttle response on this hybrid vehicle. Um, you know, if we saw an upward trend here or an excessive nose on the end, then we may, you know, identify a lean running condition. Um, we don't have excessive turbulence, at least at idle. You know, there's some things that we can still pick up even though, you know, the waveform looks different than what we're used to seeing. Now, since I have this ignition coil pulled out of the vehicle and I have that high tension lead going from the coil to the spark plug, let's turn on our coil unplug pickup again and let's touch it to the side of that ignition coil. Now, we don't wanna go down towards the end. We don't want a spark jumping to this and jumping into our scope. So I'm still gonna go at the, up by the top of the coil, but I'm gonna go where, you know, that power is going through the, uh, the longer part of the coil before it hits the spark plug wire. And now we can kind of get a better signal here. And this, this spark plug wire may be causing a slight, slight misfire here. I am getting some rattling from the um, transmission, which is common on hybrids with a misfire. But if we look at, let me zoom back out. If we look at this signal, you know, we might actually be getting a better, more usable signal with the COP wand up at the bottom of the coil with the spark plug wire in place. So you may have to play around a little bit with this to see what gives you the best signal. Now, if we wanna look at our trigger signal, remember that's going to be just a logic level signal. It's gonna be a square wave typically from the ECM out to the coil. So here on my red trace, we can see that we're sitting down at zero volts. Then we get this five volt square wave. Um, I said it's 20 volts, so I wasn't sure if it's gonna be a five volt or a 12 volt square wave. And as we zoom in, we can actually see that we are at less than four volts. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And here we see we're sitting at zero volts. We jump up to four volts. It does have a slight taper heading uphill and then it shuts off. The transistor in there shuts off as well. And that's when we get our inductive kick. So this is our dwell period. It's saying, turn on the coil, turn off the coil. The transistor and the electronics inside the coil are doing the rest of the work. Now, there is another unique feature on Toyotas, and I believe some Hondas might do this as well, and that is the feedback circuit. So this coil has four wires. It has a power, a ground, and then our trigger wire, which we're looking at now, and then it has a feedback. Now, Toyota calls the trigger IGT, ignition trigger, and then the feedback is gonna be IGF. And most of the time, the feedback signal is interconnected between all the coils. They tie together and they have one input to the PCM. The trigger is going to be a per cylinder um, input or output from the PCM. Let's change this one to times one probe. And I'm not sure if this is a 12 volt or a five volt signal as well. And I'm actually gonna hook this up to a different coil 
than the one I'm currently probed to. So now we get this yellow trace here, and you see how that square wave doesn't quite match our trigger? The feedback doesn't match the trigger? Well, it, it's kind of a strange thing because the feedback is supposed to let the computer, hey, no, hey, I just wanna let you know I got your signal, we're charging up, and we're getting ready to fire. It doesn't confirm that the coil has fired. Um, you know, it's just confirming to the computer we're, we're still alive, we're here, we, we got your signal. Um, so we get this little square wave. But let me zoom back out. So if we zoom out, we can see that feedback signal for every single coil on the engine. So even though the back coils are really hard to get to, um, if we had a misfire on one of those signals, we can hook up to the IGF, the feedback signal on one of the front coils, and we can at least verify that one of the back coils got the signal and is responding back to the computer. So if we zoom in, zoom in here, we can see, you know, this one sent the feedback, this one sent the feedback. Now we can see oscillations on almost all of these except for the one that we're probed onto. And we might be losing those oscillations because we have the spark plug wire in place. I'm not quite sure. But every single one of those coils has confirmed to the computer that they got a signal to fire. If one of those was missing, we would say, hey, we either have a coil that's unplugged or we have a bad coil somewhere. And then there's another problem with this that if one of these coils were to short out the feedback signal, sometimes it can cause the vehicle to not run, um, cause all kinds of error codes because the computer no longer knows if any of the coils have fired. Um, so that is another scenario that we've seen with these coils. Okay, so the purpose of this week's test is to get a capture of a vehicle that has a transistor built into the coil, a smart coil. So we're gonna wanna see the ECM trigger signal. It's normally just a logic level signal, um, no big spikes, either zero to five volts or zero to 12 volts. And then if you have an amp clamp and you can put an amp clamp around the current going to that coil, that'd be great. That is a good indicator of the health of all the different coils. And then if you have a way of checking secondary on these with the, either the, the wand um, or probe or the extension leads, the spark plug leads or the HT extension leads between the coil and the spark plug, then put those into place. But even if you have those, you still need your regular secondary ignition clamp. If I miss something in this video, put a comment down below. I do miss stuff at times, so hopefully I can answer any questions you have. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe and click the bell. And if you're interested in participating in the Facebook group, getting some captures, posting them up, I will review those captures every Saturday night during a live stream. I'll put a link to that Facebook group down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.